What's going on guys, it's your boy with the owl coach of the West Virginia Noctowls with another QDL match this week. Uh, this is week 8 against Tempora boys, and uh, I believe this is a 10 week season, so we're coming up to a close here on the season pretty soon. Uh, looking forward to hopefully a good playoff run, but for this week we have a matchup against another pretty short roster. Uh, man's in love with the Ultra Beasts here. Got Buzzwall, Nihilego, and Zerkatree. Uh, Buzzle and Neo Lego are kind of interesting together because one is like so extreme on the uh, the physical side, both bulky and strong wise, and then Neo Lego is the opposite. It's really extreme to the special side where it's really strong and bulky on the special side, but uh, both pretty frail, vice versa. Uh, generally speaking, he has pretty good hazard control. He has a lot of defoggers and uh, Glyscore is really the only defogger you need. It's one of the better ones out there. Uh, Neo Lego and Glyscore are also both pretty good hazard setters as well as uh, empty box down here. Uh, I, I don't know why. I'm pretty sure they have Gen 8 sprites on Pogi Pace, so I don't know why Corsola doesn't have one. But yeah, stuff like Balkaron to this gen with heavy duty boots being added is a absolute demon if you don't have a check for it. Uh, Latios could be another pretty big, uh, it's very versatile, it could, it's actually probably better defensively than it is offensively, but choice sets and combine or whatever could also be a pretty big threat. I think it even gets Dragon Dance this gen now, so that's interesting. Uh, Buzzwall, all of the Ultra Beasts pretty much, any of the, pretty much any Ultra Beast could be good as a choice lock mon, so there, you've always got to keep that in mind, and then uh, Buzzwall could be pretty good, physically defensive wall, the Freest and stuff, or bulk up maybe even. Uh, Glass Core, another very versatile Mon, great, uh, Hazard Control Mon, great Pivot with uh, U-Turn and stuff, and uh, even like a Swords Dance Glass Core could be very good. And the Alego could be pretty good offensively as well as a great Hazard Setter with access to stuff like Toxic Spites as well as Stealth, Ro Stealth Rock, uh, Zerkatry, a good Breaker with a ridiculous special attack stat, I think it's above 170, I don't know the exact number, but... Uh, it does kind of lack coverage. Uh, it only gets really like electric moves, and then I think Energy Ball and Dazzling Leam is about the extent of it. So, uh, threatening, but not that threatening. Uh, empty box down here kind of just infinitely walls any physical attacker you ever want to bring against it. So, of course, it is always uh, something you got to be prepared for. And Ducanon is a high key threat. Like, not even capping. It has like 120 attack or something like that. And with normal spam skill link and whatever is uh, it's actually pretty good i think it gets like gold seed and rock blast and stuff for skill link so and brave bird so actually a threat not even like joking uh so going into the plan here we got especially defensive heat train with enough speed investment to guarantee outspeed that two cannon if it is running adamant which i don't think it's going to be running a uh like timid or any or anything like that but Especially Defensive Heatran is one of the best checks to Volcarona in all of Pokemon, so of course I'm going to be bringing it for that. Uh, but it also kind of doubles down as a pretty good check to Nihilego, and uh, it could be a good check to Latios, even though uh, Latios does have access to the Aura Sphere now, and uh, I think it always had Surf before too, so it doesn't hard shut down Latios, but it's a good extra option there. Uh, and uh, generally speaking, it's just going to be doing annoying things spreading toxics around magma storming everything and trapping it with it uh magma storm plus flash can is really just pretty good coverage against his team so it is a pretty standard heat train set this week uh another semi-standard bulu set uh, i think especially defensive bulu has been pretty standard for me this season along with like player up plus high horsepower coverage because it really does kind of just hit everything uh so on top of that, we have Taunt for that Corsola, because uh, even though Corsola doesn't resist player off or anything, it is going to be swallowing them up, especially since I am a defensive set, so Taunt is going to be shutting down any, like, Strike, Sap, or will o -Wisp shenanigans it wants to go for. But the reason I'm running especially defensive Bulu is for the likes of Zerkatry, as well as it is a better check to Latios than Heatran is, probably. So, uh, yeah, and it could blow both of those things back with respect to player ups and high horse powers and everything. Uh, going past that, we have a fast support Crobat set running Mono Brave Bird because it is pretty spammable. His only switch-ins really are uh, Neo Lego and Zerkatry, who are both pretty frail. I think they both take like about 40% from Brave Bird anyway, even though they do resist it. So, uh, past that, we have Taunt again for that Corsola, just because Corsola is such a physically defensive threat that I do feel like uh, all my physical attackers, I have to be prepared for it with that Taunt. Uh, heavy Duty Boots 
to be able to come in and not take damage from Stealth Rocks because that is my defogger this week. Uh, and uh, I don't think I could really come hard in on Nihilego, so there's a good chance I'm actually going to have to switch on, in on Stealth Rocks. So I always want to be able to get those fast defogs off and stuff. Uh, also, pretty much my best Buzzwall check for the week, even though uh, Baloo does also check Buzzwall pretty well. Uh, past that, we have Choice Specs Greninja, who also outspeeds his whole team along with Crobat. And Choice Specs Greninja is an active whole threat. He doesn't have a switch in at all for this mon. His only Hydro Pump slash Surf switch in is uh, Latios, who takes so much damage from Dark Pulse. And then uh, going the other way, is only Dark Pulse switch in and Buzzwall, who takes so much from like Hydro Pump and Surf and whatever. So, uh,. He doesn't have any good answer to Greninja really, other than maybe like a Scarfer or something like that. Uh, but past that, we do have Water Shuriken just in case he wants to run like a Scarf Circuitry or Buzzwall or something like that. Or in case he gets set up to plus one with a Quiver Dance on Volcarona, Water Shuriken is a pretty good option for revenge killing that. And so on. Uh, after that, we have a pretty standard defensive Swampert set. Uh, it does the same thing it does every week, like Scald, High Horsepower, Toxic, Stealth Rocks. I that the, haven't really gone off the beaten path with that, those four move slots too often, but uh, we are running Leftovers this time. We do have a Rindo Berry just so that I will be able to eat a Grass Knot from Nihilego because it's a pretty good check to Nihilego without it running Grass Knot, so if I don't have to worry about Grass Knot, it's pretty good for that. Same thing with Circuitry, uh, very good for Walling Circuitry if... I could eat an energy ball with the Rindo Berry, and I could uh, blow both of those things back with the high horsepower. But uh, generally speaking, this thing is more just here to click Stealth Rocks. And then finally, we get into our Adamant Choice Band, Haxorus. Uh, if you're looking for his Outrage switch in, it's in next season's draft, because it sure as hell isn't in this one. It is a guaranteed kill if I get this thing on the field, pretty much. Uh, but. Yeah, after that we have Saw, just in case I do get burned by like a Flame Body Volcarona or something like that, and First Impression is just there for, uh, you know, priority option. But realistically, I don't have to do anything with Haxers, other than just play Choice Band Outrage, because uh, if it's on something that's slower than it or whatever, it could eat a hit from whatever is in on the field or whatever, it pretty much just gets a kill if I could get this thing on the field. So, getting into the game here. Uh, I do decide that with the team that he brought, no Volcarona, which I'm actually not that surprised by because I do have Heatran. But looking at his team, like Swampert isn't really that important long term, so I figured I could just lead with it and maybe get my rocks up because it does have like an okay matchup against everything on his team. Uh, the only thing I really like need need it for would maybe be like Glyscore, but uh, I know that I could always just kill Glyscore with uh, Greninja anyway. So I am going to lead Swampert as he does lead his Nihilego. Uh, knowing that he very well could go for a Grass Knot this turn, I know that I could only eat the Grass Knot one time with the Rindo Berry, so I'm just going to play it safe and go for a higher horsepower rather than get up rocks or anything. Uh, as he goes Corsola, I know that I could get in Greninja pretty much for free here because Corsola is not going to be scaring him out with anything. And uh, I do want to get my Greninja on the field as much as possible, so I do just go hard into it. I click Surf here thinking that... Uh, Dark Pulse was pretty obvious, and I thought that he was going to go into his Buzzwolf. And I know that this course like can't really do anything to me anyway, other than maybe get up Stealth Rocks, which he does opt to do. I'm just going to keep clicking Surf, because I don't really have any reason not to. He's not getting anything back from Strength Sap, as he does go into Buzzwolf here. Now, I switch out here. Uh, this was a misplay on me, because I didn't notice the leftovers that he got. So I was scared of it being Choice Scarf, but... I mean, obviously he wasn't Choice Scarf because he was leftover, so I should have just stayed and killed the thing because then Dark Pulse would have been so free for the rest of the game. So that was an oopsie on my part. But uh, I really was scared of losing my Greninja because I knew it was so good this game, so I didn't want to die to a Scarf Drain Punch. So I did go into my Bulu on that turn, uh, expecting the Drain Punch to come out. And uh, I do, I think I just go for a Play Rough here as he reveals to be Iron Head. Which uh, I didn't expect them to be carrying the Iron Head. I thought maybe Ice Punch or something like that. But uh, Iron Head's going to be doing a lot of damage to me. As Play Rough is going to come up just short of the kill because Buzzwall is so fat on the physical side. And uh, I decided that my Heat or my Tepu Bulu is really good this game, so I switch out of it into my Crobat. Because I do want to keep my Bulu for that Zerkatry and Latias and whatever. And I know I could get healthy later on in the game. So I just go into my Crobat. 
because I know I'm not going to be taking all that much from anything, and I'm just going to click a Brave Bird here because it is pretty free. Although he does go into his Neo Lego, who takes it pretty well, and is going to be getting a lot of recovery from Black Sludge and uh, Grassy Terrain. I don't want to lose my Crobat just yet, so I'm going to go into my Heatran on the Power Gem and uh, pretty much eat it up and get a bunch of recovery back from Terrain and Leftovers and such. Uh, I think that Flash Cannon looks pretty free at the moment because his only switch in is really Zerkatry, and I don't know that he, Zerkatry really does much for him anyway, so uh, I'm just going to click Flash Cannon as he decides to stay in and click a Power Gem. I do get a crit on the Flash Cannon, I don't really think it mattered all that much because I was going to be KOing him anyway. And uh, he gives me his Neo Lego in exchange for getting Toxic Spikes up. So I'm kind of okay with that because I know I have a Defogger in her back. As he goes to last quarter, Revenge kill me. I don't want to give him Heatran just yet because it could be pretty good. So I'm going to go into my Crobat as he reveals to be a Swords Dance. Um, now I went into Crobat because I knew I was going to die from any uh, unboosted hit from Glyscore. So I thought I would be okay doing that. But uh, at plus two, he is going to blow me away with a Facade or a Rock move or whatever he wants to go for. Uh, knowing that I don't really need Crobat this matchup, I just want to get my Defog off so that I don't have to deal with hazards all game. So I do just give him my Crobat here in exchange for getting a Defog off. And uh, this Glyscore Glide could be pretty threatening to me because Facade plus Earthquake is very good coverage against my team. But uh, I could always go into Greninja and threaten the Revenge Kill because I am going to OPO him with Surf's. So I do just do that and click Surf. Again, he makes a switch into Zergatry. I was scared that this thing was also going to be potentially Scarf, so I make the switch because I am very scared of losing my Greninja. But uh, as you'll see here, he clicks Energy Ball on my Bulu and does just about nothing and reveals that he is also not Scarf. So I know that he's probably not running any Scarfers unless he has Scarf Latios, which I didn't really expect. But uh, yeah, so I could uh, pretty freely just click moves with Greninja. Uh, knowing that he's doing no damage to me, I could just get my Bulu healthy again for this game. The Synthesis, as he tail glows on my play rough, which is a little unfortunate, because uh, even though I'm not still not really that scared of the circuitry, plus three, as you'll see, I do eat that Thunderbolt up. He is going to be able to get some good chip on me, so I'm not going to be as healthy as I want to be for the Latios and the Buzzwall and such later on. But I do still have a decent bit of health there, so... Uh, I, I do think that Bulu is going to be doing something for me later on, so I switch into Heatran on the Buzzwall, knowing that I am even going to live a Drain Punch if he does go for it, and I thought he was probably going to click Iron Head, but uh, I didn't. I knew that I was going to be able to outspeed his Buzzwall, because he is a defensive set that I knew from Calx at this point, and I would be faster than it, so uh, I clicked Magma Storm, because it was pretty much going to be doing a bunch of damage to anything on his team as he decides to stack his Corsola because uh, Magma Storm plus Splash Cannon is going to be doing enough damage to this thing. And uh, at this point, 30% Heatran isn't really going to be doing all that much for me this game, so I am just going to sit here and uh, let him take me out with his Glide Score. And uh, I wasn't going to let him set up for free there, so I was just going to give him my Heatran. As uh, I decided to go Haxorus this turn rather than uh, Greninja, because even though Greninja would have been able to Oko this Glide Score, I knew that it was going to be a 50-50 if I went into Greninja, if he was going to go Latios or Buzzwolf. So rather than create a 50-50 for myself, I wanted to take my guaranteed kill by going into Haxorus here, because I knew that he wasn't going to be doing anything to me with Facade. 39% uh, is really enough to scare me, so I know that Outrage is going to get up a guaranteed kill here. So I do just that and click Outrage twice into this glass score and get my kill. Uh, again, I don't... Greninja is pretty much a, a guaranteed win at this point, so I don't really feel like I have to make switches and stuff because uh, I didn't want to let him get set up with anything, so I just stay in with my Haxorus as he kills me with Ice Beam. I go into my Greninja to Revenge Kill here. Uh, I don't have to make any plays, so I just click Dark Pulse. I do get to flinch, which I don't really think mattered all that much because uh, I knew that Latios pretty much wasn't going to be able to do anything to cripple my Greninja anyway. I wasn't going to be able to Oko it with any move. I don't even think like a Spec Strike or Meteor Oko'd my Greninja. So I knew it was pretty free to just sit there and click Dark Pulse, So, which is why the flinch didn't really matter all that much. I think the only thing that maybe could have been a little scary was like if it had the uh, T-Wave or something. I think Latios gets T-Wave, but uh, he revealed, I know that uh, after the game, that he did not have T-Wave, so it did not matter. As I click a Dark Pulse as he goes in the buzz wall here, uh, it is a roll to do shot it, but I decide to not take the risk with the roll because I could just go come back in later and click surf and get a guaranteed win, which is why I pretty much sack my Bulu here because I know that my grassy terrain recovery isn't going to be giving him enough 
recovery. I know he's still going to die to Greninja the next turn on a Surf, so uh, I am just going to give him my Bulu to get the guaranteed kills here as I go into my Greninja now to revenge kill with Surf. This is a guaranteed kill, so I just have to click it twice because his Latios is all the way down at 15%, and uh, this is going to be a wrap. Uh, we are, again, still undefeated. We are 8-0 now on the season. Uh, still trailing behind Seth, and we're in second place because Seth is also undefeated. And, uh, you know, I usually get like 1 and 2 O's against my games. His differential is way higher than mine because he 5 O's everybody or whatever. But uh, uh, with this win, we did actually secure ourselves a bye week because the, uh, the top two seeds of the league do get a bye week in the playoffs, which is really nice. So, uh... You know, the next two games don't really mean all that much to me unless I want to try to go for that one seed, which, uh, you know, I don't <laughs> I don't really think I care that much as long as I get the buy anyway. And uh, I, I think I would probably have a hard time catching Seth anyway unless he loses a game. But uh, because those two, my next two games probably don't matter all that much, I'm probably going to be bringing in some funner sets. Uh, still going to play to win, of course, but uh, I do think I'm probably going to get a little bit more loose rather than just running, you know, like a bunch of choice specs and fat sets or whatever. I'm probably going to try to get a little creative with my sets. So I uh, look forward to that next week in week nine, and we will see you then.